Hello, neighbors. Thank you for joining us today. I know this is not our normal annual celebration. However, we didn't want to miss the chance to celebrate our community and connect with each of you. Our intention for today is to have some fun and take a moment to be together best we can. So let's talk about fun. We've made it a tradition of our annual meeting to weave a little fun into the mix and didn't want this year to be any different. So the coalitioners came up with a little crossword puzzle and we want to invite you to join along. When you saw the Facebook event or you received an email invitation, we included the ability to print out a crossword puzzle that looks like this. As we move through the video, there will be key words that you'll hear, sometimes many times, and some, those words will be in the puzzle. For example, when you hear the word skyscrapers, you would put that in the puzzle. We did that one for you, though, to get you started. We didn't want it to be too hard. Once our meeting video has ended, we want to encourage everyone who is able to complete the puzzle to mail it to us, and we're going to draw names, and the winners will receive a gift card to local North Berkshire eateries. So good luck. With all that said, I want to take an opportunity to invite our outgoing board president, Sarah Lalumia, to share some thoughts and recognize our dedicated board of directors. Sarah? Welcome. I am Sarah Lalumia, and I am the president of the Northern Berkshire Community Coalition's board of directors. It is with unusual but great pleasure that I welcome you to this, our 33rd annual meeting of the Northern Berkshire Community Coalition. I've been attending annual meetings for about half a dozen years now. You might remember that last year we were in the beautiful, very striking Raylock Works building. Uh, prior to that, we met in the Williams Inn, the old Williams Inn, for our annual meeting. I live in Williamstown, and this morning I happened to be out on a walk and I went past the old Williams Inn. Uh, it looks different. Uh, it is being demolished and there was a big gaping hole in the side of that building. It was a stark visual reminder to me that the physical world around us is changing. Um, and that's sad, of course, as it is sad that we are not gathered in person today. Uh, but just as I was looking at that big hole in the building, I heard my name and a very dear friend was across the street, um, someone who I've seen in Zoom meetings over the past few months, but I hadn't seen in person in a very long time. And that was quite wonderful. And it reminded me that while our physical world is different, now, the bonds of community have carried on. And I'm glad that we are able to carry on the tradition of this coalition annual meeting, even while in a very different format. So thank you for joining me and all of us today in this new format. I wanna take a minute here to acknowledge my fellow members of the board. And uh, excuse me as I look down at this uh, list and, and read the names. Uh, Jennifer Savello, Vice President. Lori Lamar, Treasurer. Christine Naughton, Clerk, Chris Maloney, Steve Green, Susie Helm, Ben Lamb, Richard Taskin, Barbara Malkus, Anna Flynn, Al Badini, Spencer Moser, Michael Obasahan, Jessica Sweeney, Craig Bard, and Dan Randall. Thank you so much to all of you. It is a pleasure to serve with you on the board and I really appreciate all of the energy and time and thoughtfulness that you bring to this work. I'd also like to take a minute to recognize some transition. Um, we have some people who are stepping down from their role on the board and uh, it is with a very heartfelt thank you that I uh, say goodbye to uh, Rich Taskin, Dan Randall, Jessica Sweeney and Lori Lamar. It has been so wonderful to work with you. Thank you for all that you have contributed to the coalition. And we look forward to continuing to collaborate with you in new ways in the community. I'm also delighted to announce uh, people who are stepping into new roles on the board. Um, so thank you to Jennifer Savello, who will be the incoming board president, and to Al Badini, who will be our next treasurer. Um, I have had a wonderful time working with you in different capacities over the uh, past few years, and I, I look forward to the time ahead. Uh, so again, uh, thank you for joining us in this new way today, and I look forward to a great and what I've been told will be a very fun annual meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, and to our board of directors. The team at NBCC is grateful for your dedication and commitment to our organization and the community. 
I also want to take a quick second to thank Northern Berkshire Community Television and Paul Marino for helping us make this crazy idea a reality. We couldn't have done it without your help. Thank you for being our neighbors and helping us make so, look so good on camera. Now, as we've done in the past, we want to take a moment and remember someone who was important to NBCC and the UNO neighborhood, Gail Nelson. Today we remember Gail Nelson. All who knew her can reference her heart of gold and perseverance. Gail was a healer. In addition to her long nursing career, Gail served as a peer advocate and mentor to many. She was a role model to her friends and a perfect example of the saying, it's never too late. As a lifelong learner, Gail loved experiencing new things and undertaking new adventures. She loved her North Adams community and could often be found at her usual spot at Empire Cafe and join a crepe. Gail was actively involved with many groups, the UNO Community Center, the Mary Spitzer Center, the American Legion and VFW Auxiliary, just to name a few. Her absence is felt throughout the community. Gail, we hope that you continue to root for your home team from the skies. You are missed. Thank you, Glenda, for sharing your wonderful words about Gail. She will be missed at the UNO Center and in our neighborhood. In keeping with our theme of our neighborhood, it's important to, for me to take a moment and recognize the people in our neighborhood who are doing the work every day, our team at NBCC. Amanda Chilson, Coordinator of Health and Wellness, Brett Beatty, Health and Wellness Associator, Associate and Coordinator of our TREE Initiative for, with the City of North Adams, Tim Schiebler, Coordinator of Youth Development, Carissa Sertursky, Program Associate for Youth Development, Wendy Penner, Director of Prevention and Recovery, Susan Cross, Program Associate for Prevention and Recovery Work, and the point person for our Beacon Recovery Community Center. Stephanie Puck, Coordinator of Support and Family Support and Education. Chris Griffin, Family Support Worker. Donna Senecal, Family Partner with the Breen Center. Bree Russo, our school liaison, and her sidekick, Seymour. Glenda Matos Carter, Coordinator of Neighborhood Development. Matt Schiebler, Program Associate for Neighborhood Development, and the point person, for our UNO Community Center, Bert Lamb, our Communications Coordinator, and last but never least, Liz Boland, our Business Manager. I know it's a bit different, but I would love to see the comments from you all as you watch of these, about how these amazing people have inspired you, helped you, and positively impacted our community. So go. Thank you, team, for everything you do. The past two years have seen incredible growth and change within our organization and the community. Not all of it has been easy. Our continued commitment to our mission and our neighbors is what keeps us going and focused on our priorities. I am proud of how the coalition responded to the 2020 twist of COVID-19, and I believe we have even more great things ahead as we strive to work with our neighbors to create a better place for everyone to live, work, and play. Okay, I hope that you're still all with us as I take another moment to check in on our game. How you doing? By my count, we've said at least eight words from the crossword. So hint, hint, keep looking. OK, back to our neighbors. I'm sure that our theme has not escaped you. Mr. Rogers and his work to recognize the importance of those we re each live with and around feels as relevant to me today as it did when I was a little girl watching him on TV. I can't say that I ever thought I'd play Mr. Rogers on TV, but then again, Regardless of if I make a good Mr. Rogers or not, what I do want to do is take the time to introduce you to some of our neighbors. These are members of our communities that have, we have interacted with and worked alongside over the past year. These individuals have been an inspiration of what people can accomplish and do for others. First, I want to introduce you to Alex. Alex is a member of our Beacon Recovery Community and a recent graduate of our Community Outreach Volunteer Training. Alex lives in North Adams and is originally from the Boston area. Alex is passionate about bridging the gap between the various pathways to recovery. He is committed to being a human who serves others and enjoys expressing himself through his writings. We asked Alex to share his experiences of being a part of NBCC. In my recovery. Roughly around this time last year, I, uh, I had relapsed and uh, I wasn't able to serve as I normally would. I walked into BRCC and they encouraged me to facilitate my meeting and uh, that meant the world to me because I wouldn't be able to serve for at least another 90 days 
And shortly after that, we had a poetry session, which, you know, thank God for Susan, she, she had realized, you know, I had a knack for poetry. She, she asked me or encouraged me to share at the Voices of Recovery. You know, I was nervous, but uh, after it was all said and done, you know, I realized that that had given me a voice. And for somebody that had lost their voice for such a long time, it meant the world to me, you know. And uh, through NBCC and BRCC, you know, one the, a local kid was struggling, you know, in college. And uh, they had enough faith in me to entrust this kid, you know. And I promised them, you know, if, if I couldn't help him, I wouldn't hurt him. And, you know, he was failing at the time. And, you know, after a while, we were, like, you know, helping him help me in my recovery. You know, like, having seeing him, like, being able to graduate and having a shot at life what meant more to me than everything that I've done in life. So, you know, fast forward a little bit further, you know, after all these, you know, many successes, you know, they, 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 they gave me a letter that, you know, from my quarry check which, you know, they, they knew what my past was, but they were willing to look past it. And uh, they also encouraged me to be part, to become part of the community outreach program. And uh, little did I know at the time that that would, you know, that would instill all the confidence that I would ever need to even like entertain going back to school. And that, you know, no matter what I've done, it didn't really matter, you know what I mean? Because that's not who I am today. So, you know, being able to be part of the pen pal, like, extravaganza, you know, and being part of my community has meant the world. I mean, my mother, you know, gleans it with pride now, you know what I mean, that I'm actually, you know, I'm making a difference, you know, regardless of where I am or what, you know, physical or mental ailments that I might have. So, and with that, you know, I'd like to thank everybody again for all the work that you've done and continue to do for for everybody in our community and through all this like COVID stuff we've come together and I couldn't be prouder to say that you know I've the North Adams has adopted me as a community member and I love you guys and I can look forward to continual growth of NBCC, BRCC and everything that this community holds. Now I want to introduce you to Joaquin. Joaquin is a youth who has been a part of our youth development programs for the past year. Joaquin is very passionate about the arts and history, which has influenced his desire to get involved in, teen, in the teen writing workshop and focus on blending poetry and history together. We asked Joaquin to share with us about the experience of interacting with and being impacted by involvement with our youth development programming. Hello, my name is Joaquin Barnes, and I am an upcoming junior at the McCann Technical School, and I've been doing NBCC programming for two years. This will be my third. I initially, I initially found out about NBCC programming through uh, Tim and Carissa coming to McCann and signing me up for a group. I initially chose to sign up for the Youth Leadership Project because youth leadership interested me more than writing at that point in time. And it ended up being one of the best experiences I've ever had re relating to school and extracurriculars. I've made many good friends and I've picked up many, many valuable skills throughout my time there. The next year came, or which is also last year, and I decided to sign up for two groups. The Youth Leadership Project, again, of course, and the Teen Writing Workshop. Now, the Teen Writing Workshop has also been very, very good to me. I've begun creating more art. I've found the topic of art that I like create. I found the topic that I like creating my art about, which is industrial, oh, which is town history, spe 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 specifically industrial town history. And again, I've made many good connections and friends. Uh, another, as another thing, I am not generally someone who recommends uh, things to people unless I have the utmost confidence that it is a good thing. I recommended the Youth Leadership Project to my best friend, Cheyenne Gagnon, and our close friend, Lindsay. The, uh, both of them signed up for the uh, Youth Leadership Project, with Lindsay also signing up for the Teen Writing Workshop. They also have a, both enjoyed it. From what? Uh, 
thank you for your time. If you are interested in Joaquin's work or other works of our youth and teen writing workshop, contact the coalition and ask to see the newest edition of Somewhere Between. It's pretty exciting. And my last introduction is our neighbor, Tony Pisano. Tony lives in North Adams and has been involved with our bike collective program since it began in 2019. Tony has been in attendance in almost every downtown bike around and has been passionate about biking in North Berkshire for years. We asked Tony to how his work at the Bike Collective has been a tool for him to grow and has impacted his ability to help others. Hi, John, Tony Pisano, um, here at the Bike Collective uh, workshop. And I heard about it, well, through Coalition, because they're the ones that run it. Um, I've always tried to like fix my own bike. I don't really know a whole lot about bikes, but um, so I heard about this. You know, they said there's going to be people gathering together. There's a professional bike mechanic who's um, kind of running or instructing everybody and um, doing little like mini workshops on how to do brakes, how to do you know derailleur adjustments, stuff like that. So um, I thought it was a great opportunity to learn more because I've always been a person who likes to like make and fix things. Um, so I've been coming since pretty much the beginning, um, inside in the winter time, and now we're outside. Um, so John, I mean, he answers questions if we if we have questions. So basically, um, like we can do the simple stuff. When you start out cleaning bikes, and, and um, then you do minor adjustments, uh, tire changes, and derail adjustments, things like that. So it's been a great um, skill building opportunity, and, and also like a community opportunity because everyone who comes here is interested in bikes and either riding or fixing or um, so I think we seem to work really well together <laughs> okay yeah so I guess I yeah I mean the whole thing started with um, the downtown bike ground I heard about that and it's like everybody gathers at the parking lot across from St. Elizabeth's Church and um, just ride around town a few times is just to make raise awareness of people on bicycles and people who are driving cars and, and um, also kind of promote the fact that um, that we have bicycles that people can come and buy or they can do like a work exchange so so they um, come and work so many hours and then that they um, earn money sort of towards the purchase of a bike so they can do total volunteer work to get a bike or they can buy a bike or they can kind of split do some volunteer or some cash um, so it's good because it gets more people um, actually learning how to do some minor adjustments on their own bikes because a lot of times people will ride around with all sorts of little things that gradually happen you know that you're not aware of and, um, so if you learn all these little just little things that you can do it's, it's really helpful so I guess the, I mean a good thing about a bike community is it's healthier riding a bike than it is driving a car. Um, sometimes you can get places actually faster if there's traffic than, than you would in a car. Um, and it's nice to be outside getting fresh air. And also you notice things that you wouldn't see. Like a lot of times, things you wouldn't see when you're driving, just like when you walk. So it's, um, it's good all around experience. And it saves money on gas. You're not polluting the air. Um, and bikes are cheaper than cars, actually. <laughs> so I mean, you can spend money on a bike or get one here for not very much money at all. That's in really good condition. And um, it'll last you a long time. And if you have issues, you just come back and we look at it and either help you fix it or, or do things for you. So, Thank you to Alex, Joaquin, and Tony for sharing your stories with us and for inspiring us to be a good neighbor by using our own skills, talents, and our hearts. Speaking of good neighbors, it's been a tradition of our annual gathering to award a deserving community member with a Northern Berkshire Hero Award. This year, as you can imagine, we wanted to continue this tradition and found we did not have to look very hard or very far to find a hero among our neighbors. I'm so pleased to share the voice of Spencer Moser as he talks about our deserving recipient, Miles Whitney. Hello, my name is Spencer Moser and I am on the board of NBCC. It is my pleasure to present the Northern Berkshire Hero Award. I'm particularly pleased to present this award because the recipient is someone who I respect and admire, is someone who I turn to whenever I need advice and direction, who is my mentor and who has profoundly influenced my life. 
Miles Whitney began his career at North Adams State College, now MCLA, in 1976. North Berkshire has been the beneficiary of his talents, his energy, and his work ethic in numerous ways ever since. Local agencies and the people they serve have benefited greatly through the work of student interns, some of whom are now their employees, who were trained by Miles through the internship program he created. Miles created countless community and organizational partners through the development of this program. More importantly, by listening and asking, Miles learned of the local needs, made friends and connections in the community, then identified and trained aspiring MCLA social workers how to be part of the solution. He equipped them with both technical and interpersonal skills to be effective and successful. One simply can't measure the social and economic impact of this vast and far-reaching internship program. The same point can be made about Miles when it comes to the MCLA service learning and the overall MCLA community service efforts. Miles was the driving force in the college's efforts to encourage and challenge students to be involved and engaged in the community and to be problem solvers and doers. Miles was instrumental in the college living up to its public service and good neighbor responsibilities. And he was the first to tell students engaging the community to be humble and to approach local residents as the experts of their own condition. There is no doubt that hundreds of MCLA graduates are now making a difference in their respective communities because of Miles Whitney. A perfect example of Miles seeing a community need and doing something about it was the creation of the Whitney Basketball League for Girls at the YMCA. Anyone who knows Miles also knows he has a passion for basketball, played his whole life, and is darn good at it. Believe me, I know. I've had to try to guard him for many, many years. When his girls started playing, there wasn't a league for his girls, so he and his wife, Margaret, created one, the Whitney League. This league existed for many years, providing equal access for girls to play basketball. There are hundreds of women in this county who have fond memories of youth basketball, who are offered equal access, competition, and empowerment due to Miles. In 2016, the Whitney League merged with the North Adams Basketball League and the Youth Girls Division is still called the Whitney League in honor of Miles. Beyond the above noted contributions to the community and region, Miles participated in various efforts in the 1980s to create programming for youth, served for many years as chair of the North, of the North Adams Human Services Commission, and was a member of the original steering committee for the Northern Berkshire Health and Human Services Coalition, today's Northern Berkshire Community Coalition. His good thinking was instrumental in helping to get the organization up and running. In recognition of all the above, we are very pleased to name Miles Whitney the 2020 Northern Berkshire Hero. Congratulations, Miles. Thank you, Miles, for being an example of what can be done for so many by one neighbor who really cares about their community. We're so grateful. This year, not unlike previous years, I spent a lot of time in reflection and thought, trying to prepare just the right words to share. I thought being on camera and filming this in advance would take some pressure off. However, I have found that's not true. I'm realizing that as I sit here talking with you in the future, I want to make sure that this time has been used wisely and we're all better for being a part of it. This past year of coalition time, June 2019 to today, has been marked by change, growth, struggle, and accomplishment. We have been working hard to find our way, holding tight to our roots of tradition, while opening ourselves to new ways of doing our work and engaging new neighbors in the process. As we look to move forward into the next year of our work, we wanted to share some exciting developments and changes. NBCC as an organization has made a strategic move to integration, fully absorbing all our programs under the NBCC umbrella. This means as a community, it's our hope you will see an integrated team unified under the Northern Berkshire Community Coalition identity. We will continue to pursue our mission by focusing on six areas of work, health and wellness, prevention and recovery, family support and education, leadership development, youth development, and convening and connecting the community. While some things will be no more and our specific efforts may change, our commitment to support our neighbors is as strong as ever. So join us. There's a seat at the table, and we want you to know that you're invited to be a part of making our community a better place for everyone. So I do love a good quote, and I thought a Mr. Rogers theme, 
I would let his words be my last. All of us at some time or another need help. Whether we're giving or receiving help, each one of us has something valuable to bring to this world. That is one of the things that connects us as neighbors. In our own way, each one of us is a giver and a receiver. To end our time together, it's important for me to share something with you that has brought me hope and inspiration. One of our teen writing workshop participants, Gabby, wrote this amazing poem and created a video to share it with you. Please enjoy, take care, and thank you for being with us. See you soon, neighbor. There's a kid I know who builds skyscrapers, sits in the living room folding towers out of paper, origami planes float to the floor, refolded in hopes that this time it might soar. The kid climbs higher, throwing paper planes from a high wire, just to fly a little longer, the ever-determined launcher. Each step is a risk, each breath is a gift, each moment you stand, another plane lands. Thank you.